In this video, we will discuss the pathology of membranous nephropathy. Firstly, we will study its definition and pathogenesis. Then we will study its clinical features. And lastly, we will see its morphology in details. So membranous nephropathy is one of the causes of nephrotic syndrome that is mediated by immune complex deposition and causes diffuse thickening of basement membrane. Now let's discuss the pathogenesis. So basically, membranous nephropathy is an autoimmune disorder. And what happens in this disease is that our immune system develops antibodies against our own podocyte antigens. Most common of these podocyte antigens are PLA2 receptors, that means phospholipase A2 receptors. So the body develops antibodies, autoantibodies against these antigens, and then the antibodies developed against these antigens result in formation of immune complexes on subepithelial location. Now keep this point in mind that location of these immune complexes in membranous nephropathy is subepithelial because antibodies are being formed against the antigens of podocytes, so obviously the immune complexes will be subepithelial in location. Now IgG antibodies that are a part of this immune complexes mediate the activation of complement system pathway. Now in membranous nephropathy what happens is that this complement system leads to formation of a complex of complement proteins that is known as membrane attack complex. This membrane attack complex is composed of complement proteins C5 to C9. Now once this membrane attack complex is formed, it causes damage to podocytes and this damage to podocytes lead to loss of food processes that is called effacement of food processes. And keep this point in mind that this membrane attack complex is specifically damaging podocytes because the immune complexes that were formed were subepithelial in location. So all of these is happening at the level of epithelial podocytes. Now as you know that the function of podocytes is to prevent the leakage of plasma proteins in the urine. So the damage to podocytes will result in leakage of plasma proteins in urine that is known as proteinuria. And this proteinuria will lead to nephrotic syndrome. So this is the pathogenesis of this disease. Now here is an additional point that I want to mention that even though the most causes of membranous nephropathy are primary in nature caused by autoimmunity, but there are some cases of membranous nephropathy that occur due to secondary reasons. The secondary causes may be infections such as hepatitis C, these can be malignancies such as cancer of colon, and these can even be some drugs like captopril. All these factors can result in development of antibodies that can bind to podocyte antigens and cause damage. Now let's review the pathogenesis of membranous nephropathy once again. So in membranous nephropathy, autoantibodies develop against podocyte antigens. These antibodies bind to the antigens resulting in the formation of immune complexes. These immune complexes bind to glomerular basement membrane at subepithelial location and result in complement activation. One of the complement proteins complex known as membrane attack complex causes damage to podocytes and the damage to podocytes causes protein urea and nephrotic syndrome. Now as far as the clinical presentation of membranous nephropathy is concerned, you need to remember only one point that these patients present with nephrotic syndrome and this nephrotic syndrome does not respond to corticosteroid therapy. Now let's come to the morphology of membranous nephropathy. Firstly, we will see its light microscopic picture. For light microscopy, the keywords or mnemonics to focus are membranous podocytopathy. Now you know that the original name of this disease is membranous nephropathy, but for the sake of easy memorization, let's name it as membranous podocytopathy instead of membranous nephropathy. But here, I, but here I want to mention again that this term membranous podocytopathy is not an official term. We are using just for the sake of easy mnemonic. So the first keyword is membranous. Membranous means glomerular basement membrane. So on light microscopy, you will see diffuse thickening of basement membrane. Second keyword is podocytopathy, which means involvement of podocytes. This will remind you of subepithelial deposits that you will see under microscope. So you can see here in this diagram that this is a cut section of glomerulus showing multiple glomerular capillary loops. You can see that outside the glomerular capillary endothelial layer, there is a thickened basement membrane. And on the outer aspect of thickened basement membrane, there are these black colored subepithelial deposits. So you see thickened basement membrane with subepithelial deposits. Now let's come to the electron microscopic picture. On electron microscopy, you can see that on the inside is a layer of endothelial cells. And on the outer side of endothelial cells, there is a thickened basement membrane. And outer to the basement membrane, there are podocytes. Now you can appreciate that this is the thickened basement membrane. And these are black colored subepithelial deposits. And between the subepithelial deposits, the thickened basement membrane is protruding like spikes. So this protrusion of basement membrane between the epithelial complexes look like spikes, while you can see that the immune complex deposits themselves look like domes. This pattern is known as spike and dome pattern. So these spikes represent areas of protruding basement membrane and domes represent subepithelial deposits. 
Now, according to Robin's pathology, this spike and dome pattern can even be visible on light microscopy. But if you see the diagram, then you will realize that it is difficult to appreciate this specific pattern on light microscopic picture because it does not provide such a large magnification of the glomerular capillary loops. Now, along with the subepithelial deposits, you will see that due to the podocytes injury, there will be flattening of food processes of podocytes. This is known as effacement of food processes. So on electron microscopy, you will see spike and drone pattern and you will see flattening of food processes of podocytes. Now as far as the immunofluorescence is concerned, you will see granular deposits of IgG and C3. Why IgG and C3? Because we studied in the pathogenesis of this disease that this disease was mediated by IgG containing immune complexes that result in the activation of complement system pathway. So you will see IgG and C3 on immunofluorescence staining. So this concludes the discussion on the pathology of membranous nephropathy.